Hello and welcome everybody to PNSQ Chronicles, the best podcast related to the Pacific Northwest Software Quality Conference. If I'm being honest, it's the only podcast associated with the Pacific Northwest Software Quality Conference, and we're glad to have you with us. My name is Michael Larson, and you get our guest, and in this case, a frequent contributor to PNSQC. She is an invited speaker this year and has been an invited speaker many years, I think in part because, well, she's really good at what she does, but part of the benefit of being an invited speaker is that, in many cases, it's because you've won out of the people who have been watching the various presentations and said, yeah, this one's great. And Melissa has won multiple times, if I'm not mistaken. So welcome to the show, and I hope I didn't mangle that. <laughs> You did great, Michael. Thank you. And yes, this is a an invited speaker is actually a really big deal. And as Michael answer uh, uh, mentioned, it's from your peers. It's from the people who actually voted for you or gave feedback from your talk going in there. So I'm super excited to participate this year as an invited speaker again. So you got it just fine, Michael. Thank you. Well, as always, I am super happy to have you on the program with us. I get to say that now because I'm actually not capacity to say that, but Melissa and I have shared many a stage at PNSQC over, well, for me, the past 10 years. I can't say how many times she's been coming, but it, it's been a while. <laughs> and this year, Melissa is, again, in the invited speaker track, talking about optimizing your testing team. It's interesting because we are in a situation right now, tech goes through cycles. There are times when it seems like testing is, oh my gosh, it's the most important thing in the universe. And then, oh my gosh, testing is an afterthought. And then somehow we constantly keep playing this game of ping pong back and forth between those two things. And I think recently with a few notable headlines that have been established, cough, cough, CrowdStrike, cough, cough, Boeing, that testing may be on the upswing again to go, hmm, maybe this is important and maybe we do need to consider having a test team and not just saying, you know what, we'll just have our developers do the testing or we'll test in production. So how do we get to that happy place? And I think Melissa's gonna tell us. I would say absolutely. And you, you mentioned the two big ones for sure. I started my career back in 1999, which if you're quickly doing the math, you can probably figure out how long I've been in my career since then. But that was all because of the Y2K thing happening, right? And so a lot of us started our career in testing. It was something that evoked a lot of fear, what's going to happen. And so what wound up happening was there was a ton of investment from companies that put a lot of emphasis on the value and importance of testing. And so that's how I started my career. So I actually started my career based off of one of those fear evoking or invoking type of events called Y2K. And of course, as you mentioned, we see cycles and it's very cyclical as far as when and where and how much of the investment companies are willing to put in. Hopefully we continue to establish our value and our importance in the entire software development life cycle. But yeah, sometimes it takes a little bit of events that happen like CrowdStrike and, and Boeing and others that start getting companies to pay attention and to start investing in something that we as tester, quality assurance, quality engineering professionals have been talking about for all, if not most of our careers. Excellent. Great way to put this. I also had a similar experience. I started in 1991 and I landed, I landed at a company called Cisco Systems at the time. And the funny thing was I wasn't much of a tech guy at all. I was a musician and I was sent there on a temp job. Having talked to people, they said, hey, this guy could be a good asset to our team. And at that given point in time, the internet was building out. We, it had been around for quite a while, but it was just prior to the World Wide Web. So it was doing its stretch to build. But once the World Wide Web became a concept people started thinking about, and you could actually start tr transiting things with HTTP and HTML, that opened up the floodgates. And I found myself in a situation to where I could work all the overtime I ever wanted to. And I learned so much because of that. And yeah, I happened to be working with the organization that was related to testing. And that's how I sideways landed into a testing job. And so I totally experienced 
exactly what you're describing. You're in a period of, there's so much we have to do. We need to throw this. And then when you retrench, a lot of the time, the testers are often, yep, thanks. We're good. We'll, we'll make do. And then lather, rinse, repeat. <laughs> so I think the challenges that we have here is like, yeah, you, if you're going to optimize a test team, you have to take into account that you're going to have those moments when it's, well, frankly, you might overestimate how much you need, and then you might underestimate how much you need. And the sad fact is people may come, people may go, people may transition. How do we deal with something like that? Like if you're going to optimize a testing team, how do you encourage people, but also be honest with them and realistic and say, look, you know, and there's going to be times where you might not be required to be here. I think that's such a good question. I think this talk kind of came about as I was in a very real situation where my previous company, I was hired to build a quote unquote centralized testing practice and team. There were a couple of members on the testing quality assurance at that time team. They were, the practice was not centralized. There wasn't a lot of consistent or discussed or collaboration around testing. They were really there to service or to partner up with the developers, which was a great way. The CTO at that time had said, hey, we really feel like we need to up our software quality. And with that, we want to build a centralized quality engineering or software testing practice. And I came in and, and helped do that. As I was there, however, a new leadership came in and they said, you know what, centralized testing is not the vision and the strategy as a company that we want to go. So we need to be able to be nimble and be able to pivot quickly. And so this talk really came about with a very recent experience of, hey, there are different ways to build a practice of testing. Of course, there is the one where developers do all of their testing. Software engineers are also responsible for their own testing or for managing the testing. That would be you know, what we kind of call the decentralized approach. And that becomes the individual or perhaps project team's definition of what's enough testing. You can move then into kind of a hybrid approach is what we were trying to transition. So starting out with a centralized testing team where everybody reported into quality engineering managers and, and the head of quality engineering, which was myself at that point, where the entire practice of testing was centralized and testing was essentially only done or majorly done by those quality engineers there. And then you have something in between. So I think the ability for us to be nimble enough to pivot quickly, to be able to still support the value and importance of testing, even if the direction or the vision or strategy of the company or organization has changed where the staffing looks different. So this talk is near and dear to my heart because I just experienced it within about a year or so ago. So I have a lot of practical experience there, but I think it also showed a lot of, um, you know, just the landscape of testing of where it's been, right? And you have a lot of people on one one side of the the coin of only centralized testing is the is the best type of testing, and they will push and make sure that that is part of their career choice. And others are no, it is completely decentralized, and software engineers are responsible for all testing, and we trust and believe that they will be able to do that, right? And so I think that there's a way that encompasses all of those and a couple of flavors in between. So that's where this talk really came from. And again, very practical and uh, short-lived experiences from myself very recently that I'm going to share a lot of examples on. Well, that is excellent. And I also want to emphasize from the logistics aspect of the conference, there are, of course, those that are attending in person. We have virtual attendees and participants. If you pay to attend the conference as a virtual attendee, you get to look at all of the sessions on the two days that we're actively holding the conference. And of course, Melissa's will be part of that. I also want to mention the fact that the invited speakers and the keynotes are all in the main ballroom. And that is also going to be streamed throughout the entire conference. And that is available as a free track. So if perchance you cannot attend the conference and you just don't have the funds to attend, you can still take part in PNSQC. And Melissa's talk is going to be definitely there for you to hear because she is one of the invited speakers. So you'll get to hear her for free. And here's something very practicable 
actionable, I should add, and maybe even something that you can bring back to your organization without permission. Melissa, if people want to get in touch with you and they want to know more about you, how can they do that? I have a very big LinkedIn presence. I'm on LinkedIn a lot. I still definitely have an X slash uh, Twitter account as well. Not quite as active as we're kind of looking just at the landscape of that platform here, but email and LinkedIn are kind of my go-tos at the moment. Feel free to, to look me up there. I enjoy lots of the collaboration and back and forth on either one of those forums. I always actually love anyone that attends my session. Part of me being a speaker at this great conference. And by the way, I love the fact that there are lots of different varieties and options for folks to attend virtually or in person and to consume that information. I would say also part of the joy of being part of a conference virtually or in person are those kind of hallway conversations that you have. So I encourage folks to get in touch with me before the conference, of course, during the conference, and certainly all the conversations that stem from after the conference. So those two forums are probably the best way to get in touch with me now until figure out the, the right platform in which to engage more and more. Well, this is going to be a great session. I am sure of it. And for those of you who have been listening, we want to say thank you for joining us for yet another episode of PNSQ Chronicles. We look forward to seeing you there if you are there or online, if that's how you want to participate. Regardless, thanks for listening. And we look forward to speaking with you soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.